So, on the previous video we saw how to make a 3D A star algorithm. On this one we will see how to actually make it to use multiple threads depending on how many pathfinding jobs uh, it requests. Now, what we will need, we are going to create a new class, we are going to call it pathfinder class, okay, and we are going to do a few changes on the previous uh, scripts we wrote. So, before we see the pathfinder, uh, the pathfinder master, let's see the changes we did. Uh, on the node we pretty much uh, keep the same, okay, we didn't add anything. Now, on grid base, I've added an integer to control how many agents I want to call at the same time. And I basically created a new uh, function over here that is going to be used with our delegate and we're going to use it as a callback uh, function. Okay, then over here we have changed the the way we call uh, the the pathfinding okay and we're going to see it in, in a little bit further uh, in more uh, in more detail now on pathfinder i've added a new boolean which is a public volatile bool uh, job done okay and we initialize on false if you do not know what volatile is volatile just indicates that a field ma might be modified by multiple threads that are executing at the same time. Okay. Now, we need the complete callback, which is the delegate that we're going to use from uh, our Pathfinder master. And we need also a list uh, of nodes, which is the found path. Next. We did, I did changes on uh, the find path function. Okay, so basically I deleted everything we had over here. And I've also created a constructor. So let's see the constructor first. The constructor is going to take the starting and uh, the target node. Okay, and then it's going to take a delegate with our callback. So, the constructor just simply updates the variables over here, okay, and the grid base too, and it has the complete callback. It basically, the delegate is, if you do not know what the delegate is, it's a variable that points to a function so that we can pass it around, okay, since it's a variable. So, when we need to create a new pathfinding job, Okay, we basically request uh, the pathfinding master comes and calls this uh, constructor, okay, and it creates a new thread for all this stuff. So, we have our pathfinder constructor, we have our find path, our modified find path function, and we also need a notify complete. Uh, function which is uh, it checks if the callback is not null then it uh, it basically passes the the found path so it passes it calls the function we have into our grid okay which is the show path we will see in a bit later what it is basically passes the list around from uh, thread to thread so this way because we are using multiple threads you cannot access something from the main thread unity has okay you getting you crash you either get an error or you crash whole unity and that's why we need to use the notifying complete basic now let's see the pathfind master okay i'm using the namespaces for my grid and I've also included this in the pathfinding namespace. Okay. And the other namespace we're going to need is the system.threading. Okay. I want this to be from on a mono behavior, to derive from mono behavior because 
I want to use uh, both start but most importantly I want to use uh, the update now we could have create a new thread to keep track of uh, the jobs we have completed but that's just getting uh, more complicated uh, using it in the main thread unit has this not uh, I don't see uh, pretty much of a problem right here over here so you can create uh, another thread to start a new thread for to keep track basically of how many jobs you have completed to keep track of all the other threads so okay we set it up as a delegate uh, as a singleton so we can access it wherever we want the maximum jobs is how many uh, how many threads we can open at the same time okay I just have it to three right now the delegate we're going to use which basically as I said is a function that we pass around and this delegate has a list of nodes which is basically our path now we need to list the current jobs and the jobs we have to do we initialize them on start and then on update we start by by having uh, the by index uh, to zero and while i is lower than the current jobs we have to do then we check if that job is done and if it's done we notify complete otherwise and we remove it from the current jobs else we just add to the to the i so it does uh, so basically this checks if a job is done or not and this is a cool way and a nice way to to look through a loop okay and also remove uh, stuff from the stuff for for that loop so if this was just a for loop okay you couldn't just remove uh, remove stuff from the current jobs because the for loop will keep running will still running so with a while loop and simply like that okay you can look through a list and also remove it remove stuff from it now if we have to do jobs uh, if the, the jobs we have to do basically we have more than uh, we have at least one and uh, the current jobs list is less than the maximum jobs we allow okay then we go we create a new pathfinder job which will be the first to do jobs we remove uh, the first to do job and we add it on the current jobs and then we start a new thread okay and we call the thread job thread new thread and we pass the job dot find path so basically it comes over here and starts all this and it has every function we have over here it starts a new thread for it and the only thing left to do then is to start the thread now because we're using C sharp and we have the garbage collector we, we do not have to it's not necessary basically to keep reference to the thread okay so when the thread is completed then the garbage collector is going to to take care of it basically okay and that's this inside the documentation also so don't feel that it's weird that we do not uh, close the thread basically okay and that's basically the pathfinder master and the only thing that we need is a public function that requests uh, for a pathfind and we need to pass the starting and the target node and then the callback for uh, the when the job is complete okay so pathfinder new job new pathfinder okay we basically call the constructor and we add to the to do jobs now there is a few changes on the pathfinder tool and the changes is uh, I've created a new function to basically return a node and it's 
similar to the one we have on the grid base over here but there is one significant difference and that is the lock okay because when you are opening when you have uh, a lot of threads if you have uh, in our case there is uh, there's a node that that is walkable and uh, when we calculate the path when we are still calculating the path uh, we change that uh, that node into to not be uh, to be unworkable basically then there is a problem there because we are accessing stuff from multi threads and probably going to either crash or get errors okay so uh, this way we basically lock uh, the grid base to not change uh, for this thread basically okay so even if you do changes there uh, it won't it won't be affected it will uh, it will take it as it was the moment it took uh, your grid base basically okay that's basically now since we have the get node over here the the last thing that we need to change is from inside the get neighbor node we, we were using the get node from the grid base but over here we're going to change that and we're going to call the the new get node basically we have over here on the grid base we're still gonna keep the get node and the other one the get node from vector3 okay now this get node from vector3 is only to take positions uh, to basically to use it on the start okay so it's not uh, too accurate that it's going to return you uh, if you pass a vector 3 the position and that's why because we, we when we are passing a vector 3 position we also need to take into account the offsets we have we have already uh, passed but anyway so as i was saying you need to change uh, the get nodes from inside the get neighbor node to use the get node that has on the pathfinder instead of the one we have on grid base okay and you see over here where we have uh, where you have to change it so that's basically it for to have your multi-threading so let's see the grid base how we're going to call it okay so on start okay start we immediately turn it to false so it runs only one frame we take the starting node and uh, the target node the end node okay we said we disable the first the starting node uh, the world object and then we say for how many agents we have okay pathfinding is the namespace go to the pathfinding master you can take the instance or save it somewhere if you do not want to use it in here and then request a path to find and you pass the starting node the target node and the callback so when it when a job is done okay and the thread closes it's going to pass uh, with the delegate it's going to pass the list uh, of nodes over here and then we simply disable the world objects okay now let's uncomment uh, the debug log and you will see that uh, when we have more agents than the jobs we allow you will see that the debug log is going to take a bit longer to, to, to appear basically don't forget to add the pathfinding master and I hit play and uh, now I only have one agent okay okay similar as before we only get one debug log now let's try something else let's try with 20 agents it doesn't matter if they have the same path or if they are requesting the same path uh, currently there is no agent uh, avoidance there is only obstacle avoidance and agent avoidance uh, there are different ways you can do that okay and in a lot of games you will see that they just stop the agent until the next uh, the next node is basically walkable again okay or the next node on his path okay but there are other ways too and we will see on a case-by-case -case basis 
bases over there basically so let's hit play once again we have 20 agents i'm going to pause this and you will see that the first one of course is for we lose one frame basically to create the to start the process and you will see that we only get instead of getting all the 20 agents at the same frame we're getting them uh, one by one basically now the good thing about uh, the the multi-threading tool is I can take up let's have a thousand agents okay if I click start let's uh, I should probably have hit play yet okay you see that uh, it doesn't do everything on the same frame now let's actually put it to the test too but I'm going to remove the debug log because the debug log uh, it's pretty heavy and we're actually going to use the profiler let me dock it well basically I don't need to dock it basically let's just have it over here now I'm only we're only going to, to see the CPU users and the memory users okay we're not interesting in anything else and let's keep it to a thousand agents I think it's a good one let's hit play and let's hit start let's see what is that spike and that spike is, isn't even on the on the script over here okay it's on it's called on physics processing so now keep in mind that I'm also recording a video at this time and my PC isn't really the best one and as far as I can see there isn't uh, behavior update you see that it only runs like 0.9 and memory users you can see the memory users over here but after that physics spike which I have no clue what it was you see that we keep a good uh, from 200 fps to 100 fps 60 fps let's see what that spike was and for some reason I'm getting physics processing even though there is no physics in the scene maybe it's the collide steps so anyway you can see that uh, it's basically because we have multi-threading doesn't keep uh, it, it, ca it has as far as the pathfinding is concerned and not the physics for some reason okay then it works pretty good it can take up a lot of agents okay a thousand agents isn't uh, really a light thing and I think it passes the stress uh, the stress test we did over here so I'll end the video here if you like the videos and want to see more like this then consider supporting me uh, on patreon and also like subscribe spread the word around share the video with your friends families okay and i'll see you next time